have you ever forgotten your phone when you didn't realize that you'd forgotten it? I'm guessing you didn't just smack your head and exclaim, damn, apropos to nothing. The realization probably didn't dawn onto you spontaneously. More likely, you reached for your phone, pawing open your pocket or handbag, and were momentarily confused by it not being there. Then you did a mental recap of the morning's events. In my case, my phone's alarm woke me up as normal, but I didn't realize the battery was lower than I expected. It was a new phone, and it had this annoying habit of leaving applications running that drained the battery overnight. So, I put it on to charge while I showered, instead of into my bag like normal. It was a momentary slip from the routine, but that was all it took. Once in the shower, my brain got back into the routine it followed every morning, and that was it. Forgotten. This wasn't just me being clumsy. As I later researched, this was a recognized brain function. Your brain doesn't work on just one level, it works on many. Like when you're walking somewhere, and you think about your destination and avoiding hazards, but you don't need to think about keeping your legs moving properly. If you did, the entire world would turn into one massive hilarious quap cosplay. I wasn't thinking about regulating my breath. I was thinking about whether I should grab a coffee on the drive to work, which I did. I wasn't thinking about moving my breakfast through my intestines. I was wondering whether I'd finish on time to pick up my daughter Emily from the nursery after work or get stuck with another late fee. This is the thing though. There is a level of your brain that just deals with routine so that the rest of the brain can think about the other things. Think about it. Think about your last commute. Do you actually remember it? Probably little, if anything. Most common journeys blur into one, and recalling any particular one is scientifically proven to be difficult. Do something often enough, and it becomes routine. Keep doing it, and it stops being processed by the thinking bits of the brain, and just gets regulated to the part of the brain dedicated to dealing with routine. Your brain keeps doing it, without you thinking about it. Soon, you think about your routine to work as much as you keep doing your legs moving when you walk. Most people call this autopilot, but there's a danger there. If you have a break in the routine, your ability to remember and account for the break is only as good as your ability to stop your brain going into routine mode. My ability to remember my phone being on the counter is only as reliable as my ability to stop my brain entering morning routine mode, which would dictate that my phone is actually in my bag. But I didn't stop my brain entering routine mode. I got into the shower as normal. Routine started, exception forgotten, autopilot engaged. My brain went back into routine. I showered. The morning radio forecasted amazing weather. I gave Emily her breakfast and loaded her into the car. She was so adorable that morning. She complained about the bad sun in the morning blinding her, saying it stopped her from having her little sleep on the way to the nursery, and left. That was the routine. It didn't matter that my phone was on the counter, charging silently. My brain was in the routine, and in the routine, my phone was in the bag. Which is why I forgot my phone. <sighs> not clumsiness, not negligence. Nothing more than my brain entering routine mode and overriding the exception. Autopilot engaged. I left for work. It was a sweltering hot day already. The bad sun had been burning since before my treacherously absent phone woke me. The steering wheel was burning hot to touch when I sat down. I think I heard Emily shift over behind my driver's seat to get out of the glare. But I got to work, submitted my reports, attended the morning meetings. It's not until I took a quick coffee break and reached for my phone that the illusion shattered. I did a mental restep. 
I remembered the dying battery. I remembered putting it on the charger. I remember leaving it there. My phone... Well, my phone was on the counter. Autopilot disengaged. Again, there lies the danger. Until you have that moment, that moment you reached for your phone and shattered the illusion, that part of the brain is still in routine mode. It has no reason to question the facts of the routine. That's why it's a routine. It's an act of repetition. It's not as if anyone could say, why didn't you remember your phone? Didn't it occur to you? How could you forget it? You must be so negligent. This is to miss the point. My brain was telling me the routine was complete as normal, despite the fact that it wasn't. It wasn't that I forgot my phone. According to my brain, according to the routine, my phone was in my bag. Why would I think to question it? Why would I check it? Why would I suddenly remember out of nowhere that my phone was on the counter? My brain was wired into the routine and the routine was that my phone was in the bag. The day continued to bake on. The morning haze gave way to the relentless fever heat of the afternoon. Tarmac bubbled. Direct beams of heat threatened to crack the pavement. People swapped coffees for iced smoothies. Jackets disregarded, sleeves rolled up, ties loosened, brows mopped. The park slowly filled with sunbathers and barbecues. Window frames threatened to warp. The thermometers continued to swell. And thank fuck, the offices were air-conditioned. But... As ever, the furnace of the day gave way to a cooler evening. Another day, another dollar. Still cursing myself for forgetting my phone, I drove home. The day's heat had baked to the inside of my car, releasing this horrible smell from nowhere. When I arrived in the driveway, the stones crunching comfortably under my tires, my wife greeted me at the door. Where's Emily? <sighs> Fuck. As if the phone wasn't bad enough. After everything, I'd left Emily at the fucking nursery after all. I immediately sped back to the nursery, got to the door, and started practicing my excuses, wondering vainly if I could charm my way out of the late fee. I saw a piece of paper stuck on the door. Due to vandalism overnight, please use side door today only. Overnight? What? The door was fine this morning. I froze. My knees shook. Vandals. A change in the routine. My, My phone, phone was, was on, on the, the counter. counter. I hadn't been here this morning. My, My phone, phone was, was on the, the counter. counter. I'd driven past because I was drinking my coffee. I hadn't dropped off Emily. My phone was on the counter. She moved in her seat. I hadn't seen her in the mirror. My phone was on the counter. She'd fallen asleep out of the bat sun. She didn't speak when I drove past her nursery. My phone was on the counter. She, she had changed the routine. My phone was on the counter. She'd changed the routine, and I had forgotten to drop her off. My phone was on the counter. Nine hours. That car. The baking bad sun. No air. No water. No power. No help. My phone was on the counter. That heat. A steering wheel too hot to touch. My phone was on the counter. That smell. I walked to the car door, numb and shocked. I opened the car door. My phone. My phone was on the counter, and my... and my little girl's dead. Autopilot disengaged. disengaged.